So Formula One cars are rather incredible. You may have heard that. And one of the coolest things about them is that because of all the wings and aerodynamic devices that they have, they actually produce more downforce than the actual mass of the car. So an age-old question, something that I've always wondered ever since doing physics and A-levels and my engineering degree has been, can a Formula One car run upside down in a tunnel when it's going at full speed? Now, in theory, it might seem like a relatively simple question to answer, but in practice, Ed, it's, uh, it's rather more difficult than that. George, as always, you're right. Theoretically speaking, a Formula One car does create enough downforce or suction that it could drive on the roof of a tunnel. A Formula One car weighs around 800 kilograms, 1,759 pounds. So at roughly 93 miles per hour, 150 kilometers per hour, it does create downforce equivalent to its weight. However, you need more than that. At that point, you wouldn't really have enough. You wouldn't really have the traction that you need. So to, to safely run on the roof of a tunnel, the amount of downforce that you need would come in at around, you'd want at least twice the weight of the car. So roughly around 185 miles per hour. Now, that's just to, to drive on the roof. There's a lot of details that need to be solved in order to get to the roof and also to run there successfully. And there's a project out there called Project Inversion that is attempting to do this. Lots of details online about it. What we'll do today in in the limited time we have is just give you an overview of some of the key parameters that need to be addressed. But what Project Inversion is doing is they're going to build a custom tunnel They're also going to do some redesign to the car, and and in combination with the redesign to the tunnel, they believe that they're going to actually be able to do this. Now, let's take a step back. So this is really all about downforce and the suction you need to keep a car on the roof of a tunnel. And there is a car that exists today, the McMurdy Spearling. The McMurdy Spearling, 1,000 horsepower electric drive, which is very important. You'll see why that is in a second here. And it can create over 2,000 kilograms of downforce, which is more than twice the weight of that car. So, and they do this with a a, a suction fan. So they have two fans on the car that actually you can think of it as a vacuum cleaner. And if you were to take the spurling, turn it upside down with a forklift, put it on the ceiling of a tunnel, turn on the fans, it would stay there. And supposedly, in their factory, somehow the car got on the roof. I don't know how, but it got on the roof and it stayed there for five days. So you look that up. I, I didn't see a video of it going on the roof, but supposedly that's that's what actually happened. These types of suction cars have been around for quite some time. I mean, Gordon Murray has one called the T50. The Chaparral 2J was around in the 60s. I also used this type of, of suction device to create, create more downforce. Unfortunately, A Formula One car doesn't have these types of fans to create downforce, so it will not stick to a roof. It has to be moving to create the downforce. So that's one thing. Also, the engine, the ice portion of the engine is not made to run upside down, so it wouldn't be properly lubricated, so you'd have to make some modifications. Otherwise, you could have a catastrophic failure, which you don't want to have when going 200 miles per hour upside down in a tunnel. So you have to add modifications to the engine, also to the tunnel, and also to how downforce is created. So first, let's take a look at just about the driving on the roof itself, because getting to the roof is a much bigger problem. But we'll leave that for a second. So first, the size of the tunnel. If you look at the downforce that's created by a Formula One car, 50% of the downforce comes from the diffuser, and another 25% each from the front and the back wings. So in order for the diffuser to maintain downforce, it has to maintain a small gap between the bottom of the car, between the diffuser and the surface that it's running on. If it gets too big, turbulence occurs and you lose lose downforce. Formula One track, as in all racetracks, is perfectly flat, but a tunnel is curved. So if the curvature is too small, the radius of the tunnel is too small, when you put the car on it, that gap gets bigger. 
So the bigger you can make the tunnel, then the smaller that gap becomes, which you need to maintain the downforce. The project inversion thinks that that's somewhere between 20 to 25 foot diameter for the tunnel. Typical tunnels that you see on, on a highway is roughly, is less than 20 feet. So this tunnel would have to be bigger. Now, as you make the tunnel bigger, there's still modifications you need to do to the car to reduce that gap. And one of the things you can do is increase, decrease, um, increase the negative camber. That's tilt the wheels in. That brings the center of the car down. That's one thing you could do. And you could also increase the radius even larger than this 20 to 25 feet. But you don't want to go too big because you start getting an upside down driver 30, 40, 50 feet in the air. It could be dangerous should something go wrong. All right. So the last thing on the tunnel is if you look at commercial tunnels or tunnels that exist already, if you look at the roof of the tunnel, you'll have, there could be uh, lights up there, fans for circulation, bumps in between the gaps in the sections of the tunnel. All of those things, just like a uh, curb on an F1 track could upset the car. And uh, certainly, and if it gets upset and, and, it, and it loses contact with the surface, you lose downforce and all that kind of thing. So you would have to build a custom tunnel and that is perfectly smooth. So that's the tunnel itself and, and, and what's really needed to run on the roof. But the biggest challenge is how you get to the roof because as the car transitions from the ground to the roof, it's not traveling in a straight line. It's actually going across the tunnel. And as you go across to go from the bottom to the top, that gap we were talking about for the diffuser gets even bigger and could be even to the point, depending on that angle, where one of the wheels can actually, one or more of the wheels could actually come off, come off of the surface of the tunnel. So to overcome this additional loss of downforce from the diffuser, you would have to increase downforce from the wings. And so the wings would have to be, the front and back wings would have to become much larger, create much more downforce, certainly be beyond the rules that are currently allowed for a Formula One, but it could be done. So in the end, can a Formula One car drive on the roof of a tunnel? Yes, it could with some caveats. First of all, you have to figure out how to lubricate the engine upside down. You have to determine how to maintain downforce on a curved surface, especially as it transitions from the floor to the roof. And one last thing, you have to find a driver that's willing to do it, but I think that's the least of your problems. I don't know, it might, it might be the most of your problems in a sense, because I think, um, I mean, obviously racing drivers are very, very brave. They have, uh, they do death-defying stunts quite regularly, but um, I think that would really take the cake with that one. But yeah, a really, really fascinating insight there, Ed. I mean, the, the long and short of that is that, yeah, Formula One cars in their current guys right now, if you were to take a, a McLaren or a Mercedes or a Red Bull current Formula One car and try and do this, it probably couldn't do it for several reasons. But with some modifications, in theory, in theory, it could do it. I mean, we know that active aerodynamics are coming in for 2026. What those will be, how they will work, don't know. But the fact that they're active, that could potentially help with the aerodynamics problem that you were mentioning. Yeah, absolutely. If they allow fans on there, they'd probably solve it, although they're not going that far. I don't think they're going to do that, no. <laughs> no. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, but, you know, there is one last thing is, is, is the cost of doing something like this, which is interesting because... Certainly there's the cost of modifying the car, but that's small to the cost to actually build the tunnel itself. The tunnel has to be actually quite big. It has to be able, it's going to be a custom tunnel. Uh, it has to put up with the forces that the car is going to exert on it. And it has to be long because this car is going to be going 150 to 200 miles per hour. And you're going to have to keep it up there. The uh, project inversion is looking for five seconds. So you'd have to quite a long tunnel. The estimate for the cost is somewhere between 15 to 25 million dollars. So George, if you've, if you've got a, an extra 25 million sitting around, maybe you could uh, try and do it before project inversion. Well, th there is talk, uh, there has been talk for a very long time in the UK of doing a tunnel uh, through the Pennines to connect 
Yorkshire to connect with Yorkshire with Lancashire. So this could be it. This could be it. Never mind. Two the fact... for one. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, despite the fact that I think that project is in the billions of pounds when they've estimated it. And that's why they don't want to do it. But just just small bumps in the road, really. Uh, but yeah. No, it, interesting as well. You mentioned about the fan car thing. People might be wondering how that works. But I'll, I'll summarize it very quickly. There was actually a fan car in Formula One designed by the same guy who did the car that Ed mentioned, a car that I've actually seen in person as well at uh, Salon Privé. I don't believe I've put the video online of that. I will do so during this uh, during this podcast episode, though, um, for you guys that are interested, because it looks like the Batmobile, basically. Might be some kind of... Oh, no, it's, it's Gordon Murray. And that makes sense, actually, because if you come back here, round the back, what's that? It's not the Batmobile, but it is a fan. Exactly. I was just saying because of the Brabham fan car in Formula yes, 1. It makes sense that Gordon Murray made it. So there you go. So just in case you need a little bit more downforce, that'll help. Air coming over the car, like producing downforce through the aerodynamic devices, it can do it while stood still because the fan is obviously blowing air. So that's kind of how that car was able to stay up there for five days, which is a real engineering marvel in itself, really, when you think about it. Oh, absolutely. And, and in the end, it's all about creating that suction and pulling the car down against the track. You know, though, if, if rules were to change and allow that in Formula One or in any racing series, you're finally going to get to the point where you're holding so many Gs going through a turn that the limitation is no longer the car or the tires, but the driver itself. And uh, you probably, at some point, if that suction gets great enough, you probably have to put the driver in a G suit, much like you would a fighter pilot. Yeah, absolutely. And anybody who's played, I think it was Gran Turismo 5 on the PS3 will remember the Red Bull prototype fan car, which you would definitely need a G suit to go and drive. I think Sebastian Vettel actually took that for a spin in the game as well. So check that out if you've never seen it before. Very interesting. But yeah, it's one of the age-old questions of Formula One. And, and you know, you never know in the future you may get an answer to it, but it's going to require a lot of engineering might, a lot of funds to do, but we may finally have an answer one day in the future. Thanks so much for joining on the, us on this, Ed, and providing that insight. Very, very much appreciated as always. Thanks, George, and, and we'll see you again soon. Yeah, we'll see you again very soon for another F1 Explained, another F1 an questions answered here on the F1 Chronicle.com. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell as well. And we'll see you very soon.